Hello, hello, top of the day to you. Dr. Jason McCammon here, board certified naturopath and functional medicine practitioner. Today, I wanna to talk to you about biorhythm, such an important and crucially important subject that uh, if, you, if you're dealing with chronic illness, if you don't feel well, if conventional practitioners have kind of given up on you or you're tired of just taking medications to manage symptoms, we've got to really have a discussion on biorhythm. It's extremely important, okay? So let's get right at it. So what is really going on? What does that really mean? A biorhythm is when our body kind of has a set routine, okay? And it's going to secrete hormones to assist us in our everyday life. Or your body has 50 plus hormones that it's always trying to balance it's like this very fine-tuned orchestra. So you ever been to like a, a um, some type of you know professional orchestra in your town or city? Um, they're incredibly talented individually, and then what happens to make amazing music? They all have to interplay together, right? So obviously we have this brilliant uh, the people that write the music and the conductor, and it's just this whole whole concert. Um, and that's how your body works with hormones. They're very subtle. So uh, that's why hormone replacement therapy and hormone modulation therapy. Uh, with just one hormone, you gotta be careful with that because you're you're taking a, you know just one instrument in this orchestra like the trombones and making them play really really loud, and that's gonna imbalance other instruments, right? Uh, so anyway, your biorhythm uh, with these hormones is a way we can make sure our body is doing the best it can to secrete the right hormone at the right time of day. So an example, when we're really doing really well by our body, and again our we our infections are low, our toxicity is low, we've got uh, good mental health. Um, an example is where cortisol starts rising in our blood levels at 3, 4, you know, maybe 5 a.m., okay, fairly high. Um, it's starting to wake your brain up slowly from sleep, and then those levels decrease, they should anyway, throughout the day, and they level off in this nice little curve, okay? And if you've ever had any kind of um, stress hormones or adrenal testing done, you'll have seen that, what that ideal curve is, and then you'll see your value, okay? Especially you, anybody who's dealt with functional medicine out there. So um, now a dysregulated person that doesn't have a good biorhythm and for many, many reasons, you know, uh, I'm not gonna get into all of them today, but we'll talk about some of them. You're gonna get possibly cortisol to be flatline all day, or you might get very little in the morning, and then you're gonna get a whole bunch at night, which kind of keeps you up from, from sleep and isn't, isn't so fun, right? So uh, we've gotta really understand biorhythm and do as much as we can to get ourselves in a good rhythm, and I'm gonna talk to you about that today and some tips on that, okay? So let's get started with that. One of the biggest things is ANS dysregulation. Your ANS is your autonomic nervous system. ANS, autonomic nervous system. The most important part of you being a healthy, well-balanced individual is your ANS. And what does that really mean? That's the nervous system that runs software programs in the background without you even asking it to based on your environment, um, infection or health or whatever's going on, you know, stimuli, okay? So what you would probably know that as, um, there's really two branches of that, and that's gonna be your fight or flight system, um, sympt uh, system, also called sympathetic, and there's also our parasympathetic, which is our rest and digest. Now, we need both systems, guys. You can't just live all parasympathetic. Those are people that are extremely lethargic. They barely just do anything, just laying on the couch all day. And you have those um, you know, sympathetic, sympathetic dominance, which are like go, go, go every second, and the only time they rest, they literally fall over and pass out. Do we want either extreme? Of course not. We want a balance between them. But generally speaking, I would say probably, you know, 80% of the day, we really should be in parasympathetic, okay? Um, we don't want to be in fight or flight all the time. But do we need that system? Yes. An example would be you go start a workout. When you start training, your body did not know you're about to start lifting weights or doing yoga or going for a run or whatever it may be. It's going to have to use the sympathetic nervous system to make sure we have enough blood sugar and the right hormonal environment to get through that workout. Uh, does it raise your blood pressure and your heart rate? Yes, and it should. You need that, right? You're about, to, you're about to do training or you're doing training. You need that because you have an oxygen debt created when you first start working out, with, no matter what it is, you have to repay that debt. So the sympathetic nervous system must increase so we can get that debt paid and get the oxygen and nutrients to our muscles and so we can actually do that activity. So now the idea is that that's called eustress. That's a good use of the sympathetic nervous system as long as you're healthy. There are times when I have patients that come in so detrained or so just worn out and tired that lifting weights or a, uh, a you know a power yoga session not a good idea or like a crossfit not a good idea you need advice from a practitioner on where you should start exercise everyone needs to move but at what level based on your individual situation but uh, moving on though so then there's parasympathetic right and we need to understand that when we uh, sleep when we eat when we do calm restful things ideally throughout the day in our vocation uh, what you do during the day like for a living your job 
uh, should also be mostly parasympathetic. Obviously, it depends on the job, right? I mean, our jobs can be very stressful. A lot of times, though, it's we are victimizing ourselves based on how we interpret stress. That's a whole other video, but we can get to that another day. But your ANS is responsible for um, your biorhythm ultimately. So we've got to do things to um, balance that ANS, right? So a couple of tips here for you. Um, having an unorganized or, or random routine. If you just, let's say one morning you might eat at 7.30 and next morning eat at 10 o'clock. Um, you know, you can do that, but is that really something your body can depend on and gets in a rhythm with your digestive hormones? No, it's not. So that's going to be pretty tough on it. If it usually expects breakfast kind of early and you delay it, again, there's places for fasting and all that. Not talking about that today, but if you're kind of randomly doing this meal thing, again, that cortisol level is doing this. It, it doesn't know when to expect what. So uh, let's try to get some organization with your day. Really important. Um, so another big one is I want you to think about your space that you actually live in. If you walk into a, a very chaotic, very cluttered uh, workspace or home space or even in your own dwelling like your bedroom, um, it's not gonna it's not gonna bode well for you overall even if you don't really care about clutter you know what's happening your brain interprets all that just unorganized unorganized environment as a stressor it's like uh, should I be concerned with that pile over there or uh, what if you have trouble finding things that makes you more stressed out so one of the big keys believe it or not with chronic illness what I teach patients is over time as they can adapt to it start to clean up your your dwelling and again I'm not trying to judge or criticize anybody but you can't continue to um, try to heal and, and reduce your sympathetic dominance, right? Most of us are stuck in that, uh, just fight or flight and constantly just battling life. You can't start to heal that and downregulate that if you have this chaotic environment, if you have time you walk in a certain room in your house or again, your workspace where you might work, et cetera, okay? Some things to work on there. Uh, we must really think about a schedule. Is it a little bit uh, boring and could be mundane? Yep, absolutely. But remember, whenever your nervous system can predict and not be so like, oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen today, it can calm down. If it knows what to expect, it can stay calm, right? So again, if we get up and we, we eat breakfast at roughly the same time, you know, we're going on our walk or self-care about the same time, we're eating lunch roughly, you know, not to the minute, it's not like the Navy, okay? You don't have to be exact to the second, sitting there with the watch like, all right, go. We're just trying to be roughly, you know, I'd say plus or minus 30, 40 minutes, half an hour maybe, it's totally fine. And then we're doing our, you know, evening, afternoon meals. And then one of the most important, okay, if you hear nothing else here, your sleep-wake cycle must be very consistent. That actually should not be plus or minus an hour. That should be plus or minus maybe 5, 10 minutes. Kid you not. Sleep-wake is the most important part of regulating your autonomic nervous system, getting yourself in a good uh, biorhythm. So I suggest an alarm. And I know this is tough. I, have, I really coach patients. Um, to um, be very diligent about this. I'm, I'm patient with them though. It may take a few months because everybody's in a different place, but we've got to get an alarm set. Okay, you got to get up when the alarm goes off. Even if you're groggy, you're tired, you feel like crap, I know. But guess what? We hit snooze 47 times. We lay there another hour or two. Now we're pushing back that biorhythm. Do you see that? And then at night, you know, we're maybe staying up a little late. Maybe we're on our phone a little too much. Maybe we got, we're taking work home. We're working until 10, 11, 12 o'clock. You can't uh, get your biorhythm set, guys, when you're in sympathetic dominance again with these tasks. And then now we go to lay down at midnight or whatever, and you're wired, right? You can't go to sleep till two. So we've got to start rethinking this a little bit. You got to really set up your life to win. How do you do that? You got to get up. And again, times vary throughout the year, but I recommend between somewhere between 5 and 7 a.m. Again, maybe in the summer a little earlier, winter a little bit later, just because there's less light, et cetera, more light, et cetera. Anyway, if we get up between that time, but consistent, whatever time you pick, be consistent at it and then go to bed again in the winter, probably closer to 10 ish in there. Uh, summer, we can push it back a little bit again because of the difference in daylight. Anyway, we want to be consistent, though, as the season changes and stick with that. So after give yourself a couple weeks. Yes, it'll be a little bit tough at first, but you're going to get up, go to bed and eventually you'll get in a rhythm and your hormones will secrete like your melatonin. It'll secrete at a given time. You'll start to like calm yourself and you'll, you'll start to yawn and be like, oh, I'm getting sleepy. OK, so important. Uh, we talked about eating schedule really being important. Uh, Self-care is really big. If you're someone who re uh, really responds well to, you know, exercise, yoga, whatever, like in the morning, try to do it consistently every morning. And that's, by the way, a big secret that I have to tell you, not a secret, secret type of thing. Um, majority of patients I work with, including myself, we got to get done our self-care early in the day. That's one of the only times that you have complete control over that window. And then the life or the day just takes off, right? Uh, work and family and who, kids or whatever's going on. So anyways, do that self-care consistently. But if it works better for you at night, 
do it at night. Just get it done consistently, right? Uh, we also have to um, understand that um, sympathetic dominance, again, that's when our fight or flight system has been triggered over and over and over again. That's going to take us right out of a bi rhythm because now your body's just like, hey, I need to be ready for anything. And we've got to get out of that, okay? We'll talk about another video on how to do that. It's, it's actually takes a lot of effort. You probably will have to work with a provider to really walk through that. But getting you out of sympathetic dominance is a big step into getting, a, again, a, a properly regulated autonomic nervous system. Okay, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. I've got lots of information to explore at Dr. Jason ND. That's DR, Jason, ND.com. You can check that out. Happy to uh, chat with you for free on helping solve the root cause of health issues. After all, um, if you don't get to the root cause or just kind of playing around with symptoms, you're really not going to heal. Hope you guys uh, are well and talk soon.